Another month, another bunch of Vinegar Syndrome releases. And of course, I bought a bunch of them. And I should note, I did not buy all of them. My Ken Wiederhorn collection will have to go incomplete. And that's because I am not made of money. But I grabbed the ones I thought would be the most interesting. And I'm going to review them right here. So first up, we have technically not a Vinegar Syndrome release, even though that it goes through their pipeline now. This is from the America Genre Film Archive, uh, a great organization that is part of Alamo, the theater chain and distributor. And what we have here is the Agfa Horror Trailer Show. I love trailer reels, especially if there's commentary on them that is going to uh, teach me new things about movies that I don't know anything about. The person that put this together, Joseph A. Ziemba, is the creator of Bleeding Skull, the uh, website that dives real deep into the most obscure of obscure. And he works for the American Genre Film Archives, and he was able to grab a bunch of new scans from their collection to put this together. And he pasted it kind of like a mixtape. So you're not just going to get the trailers end to end in you know alphabetical order you're going to get kind of a mood piece some uh filters colors will be thrown onto some of the trailers some of them will be uh, shorter than they actually are including a triple bill trailer that includes the corpse grinder that in its original form was 14 minutes long thankfully it's a little bit shorter here but you get the real flavor and it results in something that's fun to sit down and watch all in one sitting oftentimes trailer reels are great if you want to throw them on in the background at a party but they can be a little bit tedious if you want to just do them all in one go. And that is not the case with the Agfa Horror Trailer Show. And what's really cool about this is that a print was made of this, and that's what got scanned for this Blu-ray release. So it already has texture that you wouldn't have gotten if all of these trailers had just been digital and then been edited together. There is an excellent commentary track on this as well with uh, a bunch of people from the Alamo and they just kind of talk about their experiences with trailer, how something like this would come together. And every now and then uh, someone will go, whoa, what's that? And then they'll talk about what's actually happening on screen. It's not a huge wealth of information about the movies that are in this, but you get a lot of personal Personal information and I think that's probably uh, the most enticing stuff for me than the more like dry okay let me give you who directed this who wrote this and you just get a real sense of the personality behind this and this also has an amazing feature length bonus feature which is an Agfa Horror Trailer Show video rage so it's all trailers for shot on video films which is a completely different feel and to be honest more rare and more valuable as a kind of film experience explorer than the uh, main thing, which has a bunch of trailers you've probably seen if you know Vinegar Syndrome, so there's like Blood Hook is on this, or you just know uh, really campy horror trailers, like the classic Blood Splattered Bride, I Dismember Mama trailer, where somebody's interviewing people that come out and there's just this one guy who's like... <laughs> We also have, from Vinegar Syndrome's archive collection, uh, House of Usher, based, of course, on the fall of the House of Usher, the Edgar Allan Poe story, which is one of those stories that I don't know why they keep adapting, other than the name is very catchy and recognizable, because the story itself is very psychological. There's not that much to make a feature-length version of it. And while we do have, like, the famous versions that were done in France, or uh, Roger Corman's adaptation, which was part of his Poe cycle, there's not really enough meat on the bone for a 90 minute film which is why in this version you have Oliver Reed kidnapping a woman to impregnate her and continue his line as well as Donald Pleasance with a, a drill on his hand that wants to kill everyone in this big empty studio mansion set that it takes place it's not the most exciting film it was a Harry Allen Towers joint who was a famous producer in Europe who did a bunch of Jess Franco films so it's got a level of slickness to it but also not that much personality personality. Uh, the director, Alan Birkinshaw, he does his best. The camera kind of moves thanks to some smooth floors that you can put just like a rolling dolly on, but there's not that much personality there. The real standout moments are like out of nowhere gore that happens when somebody gets murdered or the way that the film just kind of suddenly ends when somebody comes crashing through a window as if they had just run out of money. Uh, Birkinshaw is one of those guys who you always feel like he was a bit of a journeyman. I mean, he directed the canon Ten Little Indians adaptation that features Frank Stallone, and he's probably most famous for the very odd British film, Killer's Moon. So if you are a kind of obsessive of Edgar Allan Poe adaptations, or you're like me, and you just collect every Vinegar Syndrome archive release that comes out, I mean, pick it up, but it would not get a uh, strong recommendation as a film, even though, of course, like every Vinegar Syndrome release, this looks 
beautiful. You're never going to get a better version of House of Usher. I don't know why in the 90s there was kind of like Edgar Allan Poe mania. Roger Corman started remaking his Edgar Allan Poe films and Jim Wynorski took up the baton with his adaptation of The Haunting of Morella, which of course has breasts. It is a Wynorski joint, of course. So we also have, again, technically not from Vinegar Syndrome, but it's going through their pipeline. It has the same design that all of their releases have, including the slipcover. It is Agfa's release of The Curious Dr. Hump. Now, uh, The Curious Dr. Hump, if you know Something Weird video, which Agfa has been working with, it was discovered by director Frank Helenlotter in the middle of a film negative lab that was going out of business. It, it was released by Something Weird video. It got a DVD release, but this is the first time it has been newly scanned, and you can finally see all of the gothic Jess Franco-like atmosphere and the uh, very large amount of nude ladies that shows up in this. So The Curious Case of Dr. Hump, as you can tell, is a sexploitation film. But what's notable about it is that that's really only in the American version. The original version of this Argentinian shocker had the title La Venganza del Sexo, and I know I'm uh, saying that incorrectly, or but that kind of translates to the revenge of sex. And while sex is in the title, there was not enough nudity for the American distributor. So when they got the film, they took this 82 minute picture and somehow added another 15 minutes of black and white women that are very busty, fondling each other. So while it is very odd in the version that everybody knows, the Dr. Hump version, for the first time in North America, you actually get the original cut. It's like I said, 82 minutes, but because they added 50 minutes, there's stuff that uh, we have never seen. And it's just like a great, moody, mad scientist kind of thing who has this guy in a monster mask that is going around kidnapping women because he has problems with sex. I mean, I love these kind of gothic horror films, especially when they come from countries that we don't usually talk about that much as places that did a lot of genre cinema, like Argentina. And I'm glad that this infamous film has finally got the definitive edition. It has an amazing commentary by Frank Helen Lauder, who knows his stuff. Yes, the director of Basket Case and Brain Damage. He was one of the uh, creative minds behind the original iteration of Something Weird, along with Mike Varney. He wrote the back text for like all their VHSs, all their DVDs. He's done commentaries on a bunch of releases. And here, he records a new track that only runs 64 minutes, but it is packed with information. He knows everything about this movie. Not only has he talked to the director of the picture, he knows who shot the new footage in America, he knows the actors that appear in the American footage, and he even almost got in a fist fight with the distributor of the original Argentinian version. So yeah, definitely this is a release to check out. Now, on the uh, less than positive side, we have Cthulhu Mansion. Now, I picked this one up knowing that it was probably not going to be that good, but I always have my heart set high, especially that this film is directed by Juan Piquer Simon, the director of the amazing pieces, as well as the MST3K classic, Pod People, and he also made the great abyss underwater monster spectacular, The Rift. Cthulhu Mansion, like most things that are based on Lovecraft that were not made by Stuart Gordon, does not really have that much to do with Lovecraft. It's essentially a supernatural mansion, a bunch of characters that you really hate uh, end up there, and there's a few shocks here or there, like somebody gets boils on their faces, somebody gets grabbed in a a refrigerator Ghostbuster style when a bunch of monster hands come out and grab her and pull her in. But there's just not enough there that you haven't seen before unless you are a, a completist of this director or you want to see every single thing that was slightly based on H.P. Lovecraft. I mean, this film, of course, looks great. It's a Vinegar Syndrome release. You know that. What's a big bonus in this is that there is a feature-length documentary called The Simon's Jigsaw, A Trip to the Universe of Juan Picara Simon, which makes a really good case that the director was not a joke. He was one of the only Spanish filmmakers who really focused on doing special effects pictures. He had his own studio, he had his own editing bay. He was a real maverick when it came to this kind of stuff, even though that the movies that he made uh, were basically rip-offs. Pod People E.T., uh, Pieces, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Halloween, but he always had his own specific spin on it, and he always tried to shoot in English as well, which uh, definitely gives them their own flavor. While the documentary is interesting, 
thing, I gotta admit, it's a bit of a mess. And I wish it was a little bit more focused on the uh, filmmaker's career. You hear a lot of voices from people that work with him. He sounds like a great guy. You get a few anecdotes here or there. But for some reason, it doesn't really talk about the films that, you know, everybody wants to hear about. Slugs. Pieces. Pod People, which only gets a passing mention in this. Instead, it focuses mostly on his productions like Supersonic Man, and you get a lot about the rift as well. So, moving on, this didn't come out this month, but I feel the need to just briefly mention it. Uh, during the Black Friday sale, Vinegar Syndrome released uh, the 4K The Beastmaster box set, which is a other line. I see here VCU1, so it's another sub-label, and it comes in a really big, fancy box, as you can see here. The uh, Blu-ray isn't even in a classic Blu-ray case. It's in one of those fold-out things. There's a book with writing by Don Coscarelli and a whole bunch of behind-the-scenes and uh, promotional images from around the world. And I'm a huge fan of Beastmaster. I watched the 4K version of this, and the colors just pop. The cinematography is great. It was shot by Stanley Kubrick's cinematographer, and it looks like it. And Don Coscarelli, who before this, he's coming off a of phantasm, he uh, just gives it his all in a production that was a mess that he fought with the producer all the time that he did not get the final cut on and that the film is as fun as it is shows that like Don Coscarelli he is an original and he knew and knows what he's doing when it comes to this kind of stuff. Uh, this is one of my favorite sword and sorcery films. The lead is fun, it's gory, it's goofy, there's a lot of creatures, there's a lot of swashbuckling adventure and it's just like a movie made by people who don't take the material too seriously, Conan the Barbarian, but also love the material. This is like the pulp Lynn Carter covers that you always see when you look at the fantasy section in the used bookstores. And for that, I think it deserves to be more than just like nostalgia bait or kind of a joke as in like HBO stands for Hey Beastmaster's on because it used to play all the time. No, Beastmaster is a great movie and finally it has the great addition that it deserves. There's a feature length documentary on it that goes into all the little problems the victories, the defeats, and, you know, looking back and realizing, okay, no, there's good there, even though, like Don Coscarelli, it was a miserable experience. They also poured over the commentary from the Long Out of Print Anchor Bay DVD, and there's a new commentary with Don Coscarelli, his co-writer, producer partner, and Joe Lynch, the uh, writer-director of such classic films as Wrong Turn 2, Everly, and Knights of Badastum, another film that was taken out of the director's hands and completely recut. So with that, those are all the Vinegar Syndrome titles I have to review for today. But if you like this, please subscribe to the channel. And if you want to hear more about Blu-rays and DVDs, make sure to check out the Bay Street Video Podcast, which is a weekly podcast that I do with Mark Hansen, the product manager of Bay Street Video, an actual brick and mortar video store in Toronto, Canada. We chat every week for like 90 minutes about all the new releases that arrive at the store, make recommendations, say, oh, I don't know. About that and just you know talk about movies and physical media if you want new recommendations you just want to know what's coming out check that out the link is below and again because i've been talking for so long please make sure to subscribe i would really appreciate it